What's up guys? Alec and Kiri here. Today, dear friends, I'm here once again to save you from years of frustration and wasted effort. Our boy, Mr. Rackpool himself, aka Alpha Destiny, is back with the gimmicks once again. This time to teach you how to get a strong bench press. In his recent video, he heavily advocates the use of bands, chains, and a million different variations when training for a bigger bench press. The problem with his logic here is that he never mentions or simply doesn't seem to realize just how well built for bench pressing he is. The other problem is, in all likelihood, you are not nearly as well built for benching as he is, because most people simply aren't. And all these special exercises he recommends aren't going to do shit for your bench press unless you have pressing proportions like he does. Because at its very core, all the random band work and all the random chain work does the same thing. It increases the load on the bar as you near the lockout portion of the lift, which puts a greater onus on the triceps with every rep as compared to the front delts or the pecs. Louis Simmons showed us years ago that this methodology of overloading the ever-loving crap out of the triceps compared to everything else works freaking fantastically for building a huge bench press when wearing a multi-ply bench press shirt. And in retrospect, the logic here seems incredibly obvious. These implements alter the strength curve of the lift to make it more similar to what a bench shirt does. When utilized correctly, the shirt provides an immense amount of assistance out of the bottom portion of the bench press and not much assistance at the top portion of the press. Thus, the weak point of the lift when wearing a shirt is invariably the lockout, which the triceps are primarily responsible for. This is why nearly all the powerlifting information that was disseminated during the early 2000s before the resurgence of raw powerlifting claims that hammering the triceps is the key to a bigger bench press. The problem here is that for most of us who aren't wearing a bench shirt, the triceps are not the weak point in the lift. From a biomechanical standpoint, due to the natural strength curve of the lift, they are in fact the strong point for the majority of lifters. The true weak point is off the chest. Even if you miss the lift halfway up, which most raw benchers do, it's not because your triceps were too weak. It's because your pecs and delts weren't capable of driving the bar off your chest with enough speed to get through the transition point where the triceps take over the lift. In this case, the triceps haven't really even gotten a chance to truly get involved in the lift in the first place. So how could they possibly be the weak point? And this brings me back to our boy and his recommendation that you train many bench press variations while heavily incorporating bands and chains in your training in order to get a bigger bench press. Look at his form when he benches. He has a very thick rib cage. That's something you're either born with or you're not. But it's bone structure and there's no training for it, in spite of what bodybuilding lore might have to say. And his forearms look like they stopped growing longer before he even hit puberty. He can perform his competition style bench press using what is practically a close grip style giving him immense leverage off the chest, and his range of motion is still half of what an average proportioned individual might have to press through. But it's not just that the range of motion is shorter in an absolute sense, it's that because of these fortunate genetic traits, it's also far more biomechanically advantageous as well. If you watch his floor press, the bar is either touching his chest or maybe an inch off of it while his upper arms are resting on the floor. These are perfect pressing leverages, and most people are not built like this. Personally, I have relatively long forearms, and when I floor press, the bar is probably six inches off my chest, and that's with a much wider grip than he uses. So here's the thing. If you're built more like me and less like him, then guess what? All this accommodating resistance isn't going to do jack shit for your bench press because due to your leverages, you're not missing heavy benches due to a lack of lockout strength. You're missing heavy benches due to weakness off the chest, and training with bands and chains doesn't train you to be stronger off the chest. It trains you to be stronger at the lockout. Kind of misses the point, doesn't it? The reason he can get away with training like this is because due to his natural leverages, his bench press is essentially equivalent to your floor press. Basically, him doing a full bench press is the same as you doing a partial bench press. To gain the same leverages as him, you would have to perform a bench press with a two board or maybe even a three board on your chest. When you do this, the joint angles change dramatically and far more of the emphasis shifts onto the triceps and away from the pecs and delts. 
These natural leverages are the reason why someone like him, who's perfectly proportioned for bench pressing, has been able to make gains by using different variations of band and chain presses and using the theory of accommodating resistance in general to overload the triceps compared to the pecs and delts. But odds are, you don't fall into this category. And if you mimic this training style, you'll do nothing but spin your wheels for years on end and end up frustrated with no gains to show for all of your hard-fought effort. Look guys, Dan Green, one of the best raw power lifters to ever walk the face of the earth, taught us years ago in his article, West of West Side, that bands and chains and speed work and cycling through a different max effort exercise every single week isn't really the optimal way to train for a huge raw bench press. Instead, utilizing the said principle, focusing on linear progression and getting really good at performing the competition style pause bench press is going to yield the best gains in the long run. And now we've got my boy Dennis Arnold, AKA Freaky D, who has a raw bench press that's approaching damn near 550 pounds, saying pretty much the exact same thing in his own smart ass little way. If you want the best results, just bench guys. Quit trying to outsmart yourself with all these fancy techniques that in all likelihood are actually shortchanging your long-term results. Anyway, that's all I got for now guys. So let the hate ensue. We're gonna get a lot of dislikes on this one. So if you like the video, please remember to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and definitely leave me some love in the comments down below. Keep training hard and I will catch you guys next time.